Welcome back to the Marvel Movie Minute, a daily podcast in which we explore the films of the Marvel Cinematic Universe one minute at a time. In this, our fifth season, we are looking at Joe Johnston's 2011 film, Captain America, The First Avenger. I'm Andy Nelson from the Next Real Film Podcast, and Pete unfortunately won't be here this week. Yeah, the, the needles proved a little too much for him last week. He passed out. You know, we had to send him away. Uh, no, really. Just kidding. Uh, actually, the reality is Pete, unfortunately, got COVID and is in recovery mode. Fingers crossed, though, it will be a short round and he will be back with us next week. Uh, today, we're talking about Minute 36, which begins with Steve cringing from the injections and ends with Vita Rays at 40%. Returning to the show from last season, we have Nathan Blackwell and Chrissy Lenz from the most excellent 80s movies podcast. Hello, you two. Hey, thanks Hello. for having us. I am thrilled to have you two here uh, to talk about, uh, you know, this is a pretty big week. Uh, a lot of a lot of important stuff happening. So I'm very, very excited to talk about it with the two of you. Um, so let's just start off. We're, we're in the Rebirth Lab and we're starting off with Steve. Um, in the middle of getting the 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 super soldier serum injected into him, how do you two fare with needles and uh, watching this sort of thing on screen? I've got no problem watching it. Um, I can't say that I'm a big fan of needles, but I've never had a, an issue with it. You know, I think like most people, it's the, it's not one of their favorite activities. And if I just avert, <laughs> avert my eyes, then it's totally okay. Yeah, I said the needles are fine. I don't love being in a person-sized coffin <laughs> <laughs> in a in the middle of a room, but you know, those are all phobias you get over. All eyes staring at you as as you're going through this procedure. We we've been talking quite a bit um in the last few uh weeks about exactly the sort like what does Steve actually expect? Like, what do you both think that he, what that they told him? Like, do they think, does he know what is happening to him? Any ideas? Yeah, what sort of legal documents did he have to sign beforehand? <laughs> like, what does he actually think is entailed in this, you know? They, I'm sure they themselves don't entirely know what's going to happen, you know? I'm like, he's in the coffin thing we're in khakis like why is he not in a scrubs and i know we'll time we'll talk about the khakis more specifically in an upcoming minute yeah but uh yeah. they were just like no no it's fine wear your chinos wear your old navy <laughs> uh pants we were wondering about that last week it's like they they have him take his shirt and his tie and his hat off um, why not his pants? Like, are they not concerned about leg size changing or is it I, like, what's the, yeah, it's such a strange thing. It's nuts, but he's still like, he's still so like sassy and cute while he's in there. And that's how, you know, Steve Rogers is, uh, is the real deal. Cause no matter how, uh, skinny or weird or, you know, unphysically fit he is he's like he's always got the sassy little comment like it's too late to go to the bathroom right that's how you know <laughs> that no one has an idea of what's going to happen of how terrible this could actually end up being yeah i feel i feel like there's future lessons of like what later with the hulk of like yeah you probably want to go with spandex pants you know? right <laughs> the 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 idea of exploding pants from enlargement is not a thing yet. Future future lessons. Yeah, yeah, we haven't uh, been through any of that. <laughs> well, yeah, and it's it. I mean, we'll we'll see. You know what exactly happens with his pants in this one? It's uh, it does it does make you ask a few questions about it. Let's so right at the beginning of this minute, there's an interesting moment that I, I thought was kind of cool. First of all, the sound design through this whole thing is great. While these things are kind of pumping into him and the music's playing, and it just sounds like some crazy mad science going on here. I love the way it plays. But right at the beginning, we have this moment where, where as the injections are happening, Steve squints his eyes and the camera's like right over his face. And then it's totally like, uh, like this fourth wall break where he opens his eyes and he's like in this panic and looking right into the into the camera. Do either of you think that there's some like nod to kind of Hulk and his transformations with the way that plays? Hmm, I didn't think of that. That's interesting. Or how did you read it? Because yeah, I mean, it just seems it seems so specific. Yeah, well, yeah, mm -hmm. you're welcome. 
<laughs> that is exactly how it is. It's the oh, squinty, 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 bah! like it's the exact oh, squinty, squinty, squinty. Yeah. Right. What was funny is in the script, it actually has this moment where they have these padded restraints come in. They close in around Steve's head to hold him still. And then it says his wi- his Steve's wide eyes glow an intense blue. That would have been even more Hulkish because, you know, as we have seen with Hulk, his eyes kind of have that green look as he's going into his transformations. It just, it struck me so strange in a film that largely is, um, I think that uh, Joe Johnston's filmmaking style yeah, I mean, he's he's a sharp filmmaker. He knows how to move the camera, place the camera and everything. But it is one moment where I felt like it really was, it, it felt like it was something from a different film. And it, it just, I mean, I like the moment. I'm not going to, um, you know, wish that it wasn't there. But it it suddenly seems like a strange thing to be in a, a Joe Johnston film, to have the character looking right into the lens like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my my guess is that they probably shot it thinking that he they would have the glowing eyes thing, and then just looking at it, I was like, no, this is just weird. It's just it's it doesn't feel right to have the glowing eyes, and then have him you know feel normal. Like the procedure in a lot of ways still hasn't actually happened, you know. And so it it they probably just kept the shot, you know, of of him without the glowing eyes removing the effect. And it's like, well, it still kind of works without it. Well, I think that with with Captain America and Steve Rogers a lot of times, I feel like they, after this part, try and make you forget that he is magical, that he is not, you know, um, big and strong of his a own... A drugged up super soldier. Of his own merit, yeah. So I think maybe having the glowing eyes would have made it obvious that a Stark is gifting him these abilities. You know, like, obviously his personality is is always the same, and, and the superpowers are uh, what came from the serum, but, like, a glowing eye moment maybe would have had us be like, oh, you know, it's not human. It's it's this otherworldly... Something syn- synthetic... Exactly. It's it's as Tony says at some point, it came out of a bottle. That's that's an interesting point. And I guess you don't think about that too much. As you were saying, the fact that um, they really do treat him after after this moment. I mean, obviously, he's a super soldier. He's incredibly strong and all of that. But he's not hulking out. He's not changing colors. He basically looks the way he looks. I mean, obviously he's going through a transformation, but once he does, he is always that Chris Evans. It's not like they're not adding more effects to him to bulk him up further or put him into a special suit that does magical things. He is just a soldier and he's just fighting. He just happens to do everything faster, better, stronger. And, uh, and so to that end, there's, there is an interesting element to him where he never has like, a glowing, you know, swoosh through the air as his fist like punches somebody or things like that. He just he is just strong. And yeah, and, there's no and, there's and no so, like yeah. medical repercussions of him having taken this. You know, it's not like he's got the veins that are glowing blue. Oh, I've got to keep this under control or <laughs> there's there's no like consequences. It all went perfectly well and it's now permanent. It, and it went perfectly well and it needs no adjustment. No follow up met doesn't he doesn't need exactly. like eighteen pills a day and it's like, oh <laughs> well this keeps my and he doesn't he he doesn't end up with a blue skull wouldn't that be funny <laughs> <laughs> so you know yeah I wonder if they just wanted to avoid anything that made him seem magical for a film that's set in World War Two directed by Joe Johnston I think that likely is very much a part of it where they just wanted to kind of tone those sorts of things down obviously he is going to go through this transformation uh, but still the idea of that is not to make him look magical so yeah i think that's a good point all the magic is provided by stanley tucci just (laughs) 
Speaking of, we get a fantastic, uh, like a power shot of both uh, the Tooch and uh, Dominic Cooper as we like the camera moves in low to each of them as they're kind of like doing their things. I, I love these little moments of these two guys. They just they they work so well as these two. What do you what do you two think of these two as kind of the the team behind all of this? They're they're like benevolent Frankenstein's. Like um, they're <laughs> they, they're wonderfully charismatic. Um, we didn't get to see much of them in in our minute, but uh, from memory, the last time I saw the movie, um, you know, I I really you know just just seeing this little bit anchored me again, kind of like they're they're basically the two benevolent fathers and we don't because you know spoiler alert stanley tucci doesn't go on you know i you know i we later see howard stark in like the peggy carter series um but you know it's great to 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 see them again and and I, you know, the warmth that i feel for them like the two fathers of steve rogers so so they're they're going forward with stuff and I, I like this we see stark flip this lever and the whole this vita chamber is what they call this thing it tips up and closes around steve uh the design of this is uh great but the, I, there is kind of a creepy thing and i never really thought about kind of the the coffin-esque feel of it until you said that chrissy so thank you for that um it does feel like this kind of this creepy you know potential death chamber yeah <laughs> Mm -hmm. it's very creepy i'm not sure what to make of that but it's cool i like the look of it. it it does feel like they really went hard on that look of making everything look period of the 40s but also it's kind of like that tomorrow tomorrowland sort of thing where it's it's of the period looking into the future but it's kind of a future that we never ended up having and i think that's a really cool way to kind of make this thing look yeah, it's so satisfying, too. Like, I'm a big fan of, like, the old serials in the 1940s, 50s, like, sci-fi, you know. And and I definitely prefer the, the technology, like, the, the tactile technology of, oh, i got to turn this small little wheel and I've got to, you know, move this little handle over here rather than, like, eventually what happens is kind of the, the magic um technology of like the, the the everyone's helmets that magically fold behind them and and disappear or the typing in the air just having this kind of like the wheels and knobs and turns you know little meters like that is very satisfying the design of this whole place is full of that too like there are so many buttons and knobs and wheels and we're there's one in particular we're going to talk about probably uh well i guess we can talk about it now because it happens when howard flips this little lever he moves this to kind of tip the vita chamber up and, and have it close around steve we actually see that later in the minute in the panel and they have actually gone in and and changed out the the handle and it, from from what i can tell because because now it's a bunch of buttons in the later part of this minute from what I can tell, it's like they wanted to have a shot of Howard flip this lever where you're, you're looking up at his face and you see behind him like the observation booth where you see all the faces above him. And then the camera tilts down as he flips the lever. And I'm guessing that they probably needed it to be in this particular spot to get that shot. And so they probably swapped out the buttons and they put this lever in, probably shooting it out of order. Um, that's my best guess. Did uh, is it? I don't know. It's it's one of those little things nobody is ever going to know unless they're watching it minute by exactly. minute. Exactly. The, the, <laughs> the truth is, in filmmaking, there's so many cheats. There's so yeah. many cheats that you have to do, and because it doesn't, unless you're going minute by minute, no one's going to notice, you know, and no one's going to care. Um, and and it's because all movies are are basically replicating and fabricating reality you know in every single shot there's a catering table somewhere behind the camera you know <laughs> <laughs> and so um but it's it's so fun looking and kind of like i feel like the the filmmaking cheats that we have picked out so far um that just kind of show the process where it's like oh yeah let's let's pan down let's remove whatever was there let's put a cool little little lever right there and then and I totally think that we, that, that that shot where we start with the close ups of the eyes and it's just so exaggerated that it probably was missing a CGI gl blue eye glowing element. They said, eh, let's just keep the shot without it. You know, I think it works. 
it's it is amazing like the number of things that filmmakers um kind of have in in the process that they're going through as they kind of change this and put this here and move the camera there and the audience will never know and stuff and yeah you really do start noticing that as you're doing this type of of uh, kind of examination where you're looking at the minutia and really kind of studying it all and it's interesting to see because i mean i've certainly seen it in every one of these films so far that i've looked at and um and, and even films outside of this. I mean, everybody knows, you know, about the the car chase and bullet and how it's going up and down the same hills in San Francisco <laughs> over and over again. But if the filmmakers are doing it right, to your point, you just don't care. You know, it's 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 like that's not what you're focusing on. If you're focusing on that and, and you're not noticing it because you've seen the movie 20 times and you're starting to pick up on those things, then – the filmmakers didn't do their job and the story isn't pulling you in and, and keeping you focused on on the action at hand. And I think that's an important element um, in the whole process of filmmaking. And that's, yeah, it, it, these are things that I never picked up on in this film until this examination. Yeah. It, it's kind of like whenever I see um, characters going down like a, a – um a sewer tunnel or like an elaborate, like, you know, sci-fi hallway and they're continuing to investigate. And I'm always kind of like trying to identify because it's almost literally the same turn and the same like stretch. That's all they build. And then they shoot it. So from every angle. So it looks like they're continuing to move through a very long like sewer tunnel, but it's almost literally always the same like L-shaped set that they keep like relighting to make it look like it's a continual moving space, you know, because they don't want to have to build a huge labyrinth. They just build one section that they just remove parts or change the lighting from or the angles. Well, and nowadays with CG, it's like, you know, they can so easily modify things to make it look different. You just need a green sheet. Yep. Yep. Just throw it up there and uh, we'll replace it later. Exactly. Uh, this is the last time in the film and the franchise where we actually see the Leander Dini Chris Evans merge. Mm -hmm. um, we we have Goodbye. this moment as the capsule closes. That's it. Goodbye, Skinny Steve. Goodbye, Skinny Steve. What do you two think? How do you, how do you think that this worked? I mean, we're thirty six minutes into the film. You know, this is the last time we're going to see this. How has it worked for you? Have you bought it this whole time? Have there been issues? Where do you both stand on this? I, I, I think it, it worked great, you know, like I, you know, because again, like I, I didn't, when I first watched it, I, I, I think rewatching it is harder because of the knowledge uh, of Chris Evans. And, and I think when I first saw it, I had seen him in things, but he, he wasn't, you know, capital Chris Evans, you know, he was... <laughs> just an actor and so it wasn't like ingrained in my mind like if you took Robert Downey Jr. and made him like a tiny kid with his with his head it's like well that's incredibly odd <laughs> you know just because of our, <laughs> of our familiarity with him but what I, I I remember when when I first saw it I 100% bought into it like if you just look at it from a technical level it's 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 really really effective I feel yeah what about you Chrissy Oh, I'm always just, I think it's so weird. Like, <laughs> he seems so small. Like, he doesn't seem like a normal small man. He seems like a child with an adult's head. Like, it doesn't, <laughs> you know, like, there are plenty of, like, short, non-muscular men and I, I just always felt like, I was like, oh, it's too weird. He's too small. He's too skinny. He looks like no one ever gave him a glass of milk growing up. <laughs> and I, and I, I understand what it's for, but yeah, I always, I always watch this going, mm, get to the part. <laughs> get to the part where he's Chris Evans. <laughs> <laughs> like these first 35 minutes. Come on. Uh huh. It's too much, too much that's interesting uh because i think there is something there and and we've certainly talked about it um uh, you know so far on the show where there are times where it works better than others i, I think largely i buy into it I, he does look small though and it really comes across uh you know like when he's in the car with peggy 
on their way here. And there are shots from her side where we're looking past her to him um, next to her. And he seems extra small. Like he seems too small. And it just, there are, there are moments where it does feel like they didn't quite have the, the sizing right. And he actually seems smaller than he should be. Like and, a child um, with an adult's head. Yeah. Yeah, because Leander Dini, I mean, he's he's a small guy, but sometimes I'm like, is he actually that small? Because he seems like really tiny here. He's not a hobbit. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but, you know, but I do think largely they make it believable enough where I'm able to kind of watch this and buy into the fact that, OK, he's this small guy who is very sickly. Uh, as we saw his his chart earlier, he's got all sorts of problems, and clearly he uh, you know just wants to wants to fight. And so I, I do kind of end up buying into the character, and I think that's I think that's the important part of and then the hard part, the challenge for Joe Johnston and the storytellers to to figure out a way to kind of get us to buy into this guy up to this point, so that we can have after this moment here when he gets the super soldier serum and the Vita rays. Um, that we are able to kind of remember the place that he came from. So, so the so the uh, the Vita Chamber closes. Uh, what do you guys think that we in, on the front of it? There is this. I don't know. It looks like a speaker or a handle. I, I was trying to figure out what that was. I was thinking maybe it is a speaker so that when he when they're talking mm. to each other they can hear each other. Did either of you notice that that yeah, funky uh, yeah. round thing on the front? Um, yeah, I was thinking maybe it could it would be like an air filter, or you know, or or could operate sure. also dual you know dual um, purposes as you know a speaker as well. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Chrissy, any thoughts on that? I didn't notice it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, another thing that we have we have this Vita Ray hose. Uh, once the once the the uh, Vita chamber is upright the a scientist climbs a little set of stairs and and plugs this vita ray hose into this connector that's kind of on the back of oh, the yeah. head that's so it's cool. it's spraying stuff already is that i mean is it just kind of like i mean i don't know I'm, I'm used to seeing things like this when they're connecting things to airplanes and things but it's spraying stuff already is i mean i'm assuming it's just like oxygen or something um, and it's not Vita, Vita rays yet, because, I mean, Howard hasn't flipped any of his Vita ray switches. Did either of you uh, question, like, why is this thing already spraying stuff out, or is it just It could be coolant. Yeah, it could be, you know, yeah. depending on, you know, <laughs> a depending, it, 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 again, it's it's just meant to look cool, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, sure. And, and my, my first thinking was that it was some sort of, like, um, air or liquid coolant that maybe worked in conjunction with the Vita rays. Like if there was some level of heat or energy uh, transpiring, it definitely looks like, you know, the way that the lights are not dimming, they're getting like really bright, that it's affecting the power. Yeah. That there's yeah. A, a whole lot of energy involved. Well, and even on the inside, like as it was shutting, we saw that there were whole rows of, I don't know, they looked like tanning lights on the inside, mm -hmm. like on the interior mm -hmm. of that chamber. So it makes me wonder, like, what are these Vita rays? Because I don't know, you hear Vita rays, anytime ray, like gamma rays, radiation, I feel like it's like something that we can't actually see, but it's something that they're putting in there. Like maybe it's through these lights. Or through the hose, but I, it's like, I don't know, what is a Vita Ray? And I guess that's one of these uh, no prize <laughs> sorts of things that Stan <laughs> Lee came up with. That's just, it's it's that nonsense word that just sounds cool. Right. You it, know, because it's, it's like the vitamin rays, in ray form. <laughs> right, exactly. It creates vitality. <laughs> it's full of vitamins. <laughs> vitamins, right. I like in the script, uh, Erskine actually says, in order to prevent uncontrolled growth, the subject will then be saturated with Vita rays, which makes it sound like they stop the growth from this serum, which isn't actually what he says in the film. But it did make me wonder. It's like, God, what would happen if they they didn't give him the Vita rays quick enough? Like, yeah. how big how big would he go? Yeah, he turned into like a Rick and Morty abomination. Oh, I was going to say, it becomes John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think I think it was just they were like, look, when he when we open this up, we're going to want him to be moist. We're going to want him to be glistening. <laughs> so this is to make him glisten. I see where you're going with this. Yeah, um, I think it's really funny that Erskine knocks to check on Steve. I just 
kind of wish that it was the shave and the haircut knock, like in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, you know, that, that whole dun 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 which would have been really funny. And then if Steve kind of knocked on the other side, that would have been that would have been great. That would have been great. Yeah. Because it is like he's like, Oh Steve, hello. Are you okay? Are you in there? It's like, yeah, I'm in here. Like what are we doing? Like, I'm in here. You just put me in here. Yeah, right. I know. It's like, can you hear me? It's like, yeah, he's he's there. He didn't escape. Do either of you think Steve really has to pee or is he just making a joke? Because then I was wondering, like, how long is it before he actually gets to go to the bathroom? Yeah, I would totally have to pee. Like, I'm a nervous peer. It's like, you get nervous. I got to go to the bathroom. Yeah, I think he's just <laughs> trying to make light of because he's got a lot of medical situations, too. Like, a, a lot of he's got, you know, a lot of issues. I think he's using humor to cover it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't that be terrible that he comes out like this perfect Adonis with this giant pee stain? And his khaki <laughs> pants. <laughs> He'd have been like, I was scared. It's scary. <laughs> Do you think the, I mean, presumably his bladder, it's a muscle. It's also going to get stronger, though, right? Oh, yeah. Steve Rogers never pees. <laughs> he doesn't have to anymore. Mm-mm. <laughs> So what's interesting in the comics, and I'm 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 curious, this will be something that I'm going to have to start tracking, like, from here through the end of uh, Steve Rogers' run in this franchise. In the comics, like, it's not just strength, but, like, every one of his senses improves. His vision, his sense of smell, his sense of hearing, uh, everything actually uh, gets stronger and, and uh, more superhuman. And, um, I, but they don't really ever play with that very much. Can either of you think of any times where we see like Steve seeing something super far away or hearing something really far? Mm -mm. No, I, I, I think they probably wanted to reduce any like parallels with like Superman, you know, mm. of all these like fantastic, like every, uh, you know, if, if you, if you make him too, too good at everything, then he becomes less relatable. So that's actually a really interesting point, because, I mean, clearly, I mean, that is how he was in the comics. And I didn't really think about the fact that in the comics, they didn't have an issue, the fact that he was already very similar to Superman. I mean, they probably purposefully did that because Marvel wanted their version of it. You know, they're all they're both both DC and Marvel are always trying to figure out a, their own version of each other's characters. Right. And Captain America certainly kind of fits the bill for Superman. But. Do you what do you think about um, like their decision to kind of just so what 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 is it what do we get out of Steve he's is he just he's stronger he's more impervious to injury is is that really it yeah when I, when I think of him and his abilities I think of athletics and reflexes that he has a way of of I I feel like. When you see him as such an amazing fighter t to still kind of be toe to toe with like being one of the top three Avengers to fight Thanos, spoiler, that's later. Um, <laughs> um, that it, it is his amazing, it's not that he is so strong, it is not that, um, you know, that his body is great, but he has these amazing combat abilities, which I feel has to be related to his super soldier serum. Like he just has these amazing reflexes that have been honed now through the years, um, through fighting in World War II, through reawakening and, and fighting modern combat, but that he has this, this mind body connection um, that he's able to use in combat. Hmm. And plus, I mean, he, you know, he, he, he has this magical ability to throw his shield and understanding like the dynamics of like, you know, uh, of physics and where to throw it, where it's going to bounce. Like, I feel like <laughs> that's all kind of connected. Like he's, he's like the, the, he's almost like taskmaster with, you know, without the intensity of, of that, that gimmick, you know, that he is, he is able to in combat, you know, um, just strategize and react and think so quickly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I always felt like the thing about Captain America is that it's these two two ingredients, right? The super soldier serum, which gives him all the, all the abilities that 
Ethan is highlighting, but then it, it had to be Steve. It had to be this person who would throw himself on the grenade and be this, you know, he's, he's cute. He's like making jokes, even though he is, you know, uh, in this like coffin situation. And he is this like great personality. I feel like, you know, once we turn him into Chris Evans, then they try to avoid anything that makes him seem like he's anything other than this is what he's always been, you know, um, to separate him from the fact that like, he wouldn't have had all these abilities if it weren't for Tony Stark or Tony Stark's dad, Howard Stark. Howard. <laughs> uh, and, you know, all of the, the room full of people who are like, but what if he was a little bit hotter and had bigger biceps, <laughs> you know, um, to take that bit of magic out of it. Cause that, that really means like, if they hadn't ever given him the super soldier serum, then he would have been dead. Like he would have, he would have not gotten to fight, would have not gotten to do all these things. So if he has like supervision and super hearing and we see him go, "Mm, he's over there, then that's going to make him seem less human. Um, And you know, there are not like Natasha and, and, um, uh, you know, Black Widow doesn't have special abilities. She she right. has special skills. But I, and so I think they always try to make it seem like Captain America is like, no, he's always been this way. He is Captain America. He's it has all him and his core of good personhood, uh, and it is that. But if it, but it's also the enhancements that he gets as as the this process, the Vita race. Yeah. The Vita Rays, uh, well, and, and yeah, the, I mean, he gets the Super Soldier Serum and the Vita Rays, so he actually gets a, you know, a, two doses, two two things happen to him that, I mean, Schmidt didn't get the Vita Rays, all he got was the Super Soldier Serum, which wasn't even ready, um, but uh, yeah, so I mean, it is interesting, and actually, there's an interesting um, point that you have there, that Steve goes through all this, but it's in the 40s, and then he's going to... Um, you know, spoiler alert for the film, but he's going to end up uh, crashing in the ice and, and he gets um, oh, brought back in 2011 and everybody there will always only ever know Steve as this guy who's always been strong. None of them, nobody alive has ever seen him until we meet Bucky, uh, but no one alive has ever seen him as this scrawny version of him. So I guess there's an element that even though they kind of know what happened to him, he kind of is like Natasha and Clint, where he's this guy who just looks like a guy. He just happens to be really strong, but we never saw him go through anything. He didn't do anything. So there's an interesting element to him that seems like he came from just being a regular guy. So it's it's kind of an interesting perspective that he didn't have to at that particular period of in time, they never saw him go through anything. Well, and uh, didn't Stark also make the shields? The well, yes, and um, there's there's definitely. A, I mean, the the shield pops up here. Uh, we do see in Iron Man uh, kind of a hint of a shield of some sort, although it's never cl- completely clarified. They just say it's a. Um, a, the, a test of something and, and you know, Tony is using it to prop something up. It never quite looks like the shield, but yeah, I mean, but this Howard is the one who kind of came up with it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and that's a big part of who Steve is, is the shield. And you're right, Nathan, like he v- is very in tune with that particular tool as to like how to throw it, where to hit it. So it bounces the right ways, how to catch it. It's pretty, it's pretty interesting how he's awfully good at that thing. Um, all right. Well, let's so back into this minute. So um, so they're going to proceed because Steve has responded to uh, to Erskine. So Stark turns this dial. It, it sounds like in the script, this is the he's turning on the Vita Ray reactors. It goes over 200 something over 400 something. I don't know what the numbers mean, but he's turning it on. The Vita Ray reactors are doing their work. What's interesting here, and I don't know why, but everybody puts dark glasses on as they're kind of getting ready for this, except for Dr. Erskine. Is that something that either of you noticed? Like, why does he not put glasses on like everyone else? 
Tooch doesn't wear glasses. <laughs> Not for the Tooch. It's in his contract. Yeah. <laughs> it's it is very funny uh that he doesn't bother with the glasses. Um but you know but we hit this point where things are in motion, you know the dials have been turned and and uh Howard starts kind of spinning the uh you know the thing that's going to pump the Vita rays in and we get up to 40%. Um you know we've got reaction shots of everybody up in the booth. Uh any thoughts from either of you about any of the people or anything else going on here or are we at a point where we should wrap this minute up? It was great seeing Tommy Lee Jones. I was just going to say it's a little you're just like, "Whoa, Tommy Lee Jones is here." <laughs> I, I've I've lately been on a, a kick of watching Tommy Lee Jones Japanese commercials where he endorses Boss Coffee. Really? Um, which yeah, which 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 are fantastic. So are these is, recent or when were these? No, no. Was he doing I, these? I would say this is um this is probably about the time that the the movie. I it, they went for about ten years, I think. Um, wow. But this this was um, maybe about ten years ago. I think that they wrapped up. So if I had to guess, I'd say. From the 2000s to the 2010s is when these these happened. But wow. they're so amusing. They're so fantastic. That's Look hilarious. At them up. Boss Coffee. You'll have to send me a link. I'll drop it in the show notes. It's so funny. Sounds good. Uh, Chrissy, any last thoughts from you about this minute? Um, No, good minute. Solid minute. It's a good start. We've got science going on, all sorts of science stuff. So, um, all right. Well, we're going to wrap it up. We'll be back tomorrow, everybody. Uh, Pete, get well. And for the two of you, where should people learn more about your podcast and what you two are up to? Oh, yes. Please, uh, please find the most excellent 80s movies podcast, uh, you know, whatever, wherever the finest podcasts are stored. What are some recent movies you guys have covered on your show? We've been in a real, like, manly kick lately like we just did predator the testosterone has been flowing delta force is is coming out uh is coming out soon. Yeah, we wanted to do invasion usa which is one i've been trying to push but it keeps like disappearing and reappearing on streaming services so we went with, <laughs> with delta force um but we not that long ago we did predator which um is timely now that Prey is out. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, we need to do something that has a girl in it. Just at least one girl. <laughs> Predator has one girl? Oh, you're right. You're right. It has one girl. <laughs> She's on screen for a few minutes. Uh, it's, those are great movies. Uh, definitely check out their podcast. We'll have the link in the show notes for everybody to tune in. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow with more Vita Rays. Uh, so, uh, Pete, get well. And until next time, true believers. Marvel Movie Minute is a production of True Story FM. Engineering by Andy Nelson. This season's music is Spread the News by Anthony Vega. And this season's show art is by Winston Yabo. Find the show at truestory.fm, and if your podcast app allows ratings and reviews, consider doing that for this show. <laughs>